Hold on, Pam. Your silent investor is now having to speak up, and that might be a problem. Rich, what is it now? And Danny, you and Tony really might not make it. What's good, y'all? She gets this Erica Vane coming to you right here on Erica Vane TV with another sister's video. And in this one, we are breaking down the season eight, episode number six synopsis for Tyler Perry sisters. I'm going to read the synopsis for you all, but if you want to read it for yourself, I have it on ericavane.com. It'll be linked in the description box down below as well as the cards above. And without further ado, let's read the synopsis and get into it. Danny and Tony lay their cards bare on the table in public. Rich expresses his discontent with Sabrina's half-truths. Marie Willis puts Vanessa in her place and makes demands of Karen and Pam. I'm going to go ahead and start at the very end of this synopsis. But if you haven't already subscribed so that you don't miss out on any of my Tyler Perry sisters content and conversations, I drop new videos pretty regularly. And you're not going to want to miss any of them as we get down to the nitty gritty. Starting at the end of the synopsis where it speaks about Marie Willis putting Vanessa in her place. If y'all don't know, Vanessa is the young lady who presented herself in episode four of this season who had the missing edges. She comes into the salon and she is claiming that Rooster Riches burned out all of her edges. She was completely bald around the perimeter. You really couldn't tell because her hair color is literally the color of her skin. And I was looking real close like, girl, what was the problem? And then I realized her edges was missing. And I was like, oh, yeah, this is a problem. But she comes in all indignant in episode at the end of episode four and girl you're demanding four hundred thousand dollars of pam and karen but there's no proof where's your receipts where's the product where are the pictures like you need way more than a little bit of sassy ass attitude of fat ass and some indignation and i think that's what we're going to get to see miss marie tell vanessa because while miss marie is a billionaire got plenty of money big business all of that she also is a round away girl and i don't think that she's going to have a problem going to hell with vanessa who is trying to take everybody to hell with her but the thing is still going to fall back on pam and karen because miss marie is going to handle vanessa maybe silence her maybe sell it out maybe get her together then still write her a ten thousand dollar check but then she's going to turn over to um, Pam and Karen and say y'all should have had this tight are we not testing like what is this because at the end of the day Miss Marie just wrote a check she's not involved in product development she's not involved in marketing when investors give you a little bit of money they want to return on said investment and they don't want to have to get involved and be scrapping in no damn salon about the product and or whatever they decided to invest in so I think that Miss Marie in this episode is going to have a really stern talking to with Karen and Pam and I really hate that Karen is being sucked into this by way of Pam and honestly she's not necessarily doing it willingly because Pam owes her so much money and instead of well Tyler I don't think Tyler and the writers didn't do a great job of explaining how this relationship actually this business relationship has actually come about I am assuming that instead of Pam paying back the credit card money that she owes Karen she is giving Karen part of her company so that Karen can make it back in that way and that has now tied Karen to it and because Karen is an actual businesswoman because she knows entrepreneurial pursuits because she has experience in this she's not going to be a part of the business and then let it flounder Pam has no business plan Pam don't know nothing about anything except for getting investors and trying to market the product and that's not going to work. So Karen has already stepped in and said she's going to work on the business plan and starting to build out the infrastructure for the business. And now she's going to have to take whatever Miss Marie decides to say and whatever she's stipulation she's putting on them in this business because um consequently Karen has become the basically like the admin logistics parts of the the business while while Pam is sliding into a forward facing face of the business, the fun party person, Karen is the one who's going to actually keep this business afloat. And I hate that for her because, girl, you are within your third trimester. You're having twins. You are still struggling in love, even though it's not as tumultuous as it has been. You and your girlfriends are yes at an even place, even kill now. But your life has not fully settled out. You literally have just launched your business into this new space that hasn't even been six months yet. And now you have to come and clean up all of Pam's messes and put out all of Pam's fires behind this business that she just popped up with out of nowhere. So we're going to get a lot of Rooster Riches conversation in this episode. And I'm not mad about it because I think that this is a really strong storyline that they need to dive into. And it would be more interesting than what we've been getting. But I am mad for Karen of like having to constantly be put in the mommy um, leader manager role within basically every single relationship and situation in her life. And there are very few, if any, opportunities for us to watch her being taken care of. And then when she is supposed to be taken care of, y'all don't want to give Aaron no lines. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Now, in the middle of the synopsis says that Rich expresses discontent with Sabrina's half-truths. And I'm wondering if this is tied to Domini, because we do know that Domini is going to be coming back this season. If you missed it, I did a video at the very beginning of the season talking about where are certain characters that I know are going to be a part of season eight, but we haven't seen yet. And Domini is one of them. And I think that Rich is expecting Sabrina to cut ties with Domini completely and like not engage with him. But he seemed like a nice person, and it seemed like Sabrina will didn't have a problem with developing a friendship with him. So I think that this is going to be tied to this in reference to like maybe he comes across a phone, uh, like a text on the phone on her phone, or she has a call and it's Domini and he's pissed because she's actually still engaging with him, even though it's completely platonic and it's nothing there because Rich definitely gives jealous, egotistical, narcissistic, y'all already know the rest. Um, I can't imagine what other half truths it would be. Because Sabrina has been pretty much straightforward with Rich every step of the way. He's the only one who has been masking how he feels or like pivoting and changing randomly. Once saying that he wants one thing and then doing another all because he wants to feel like a man within different positions in this relationship. So I really think that this little half truth is going to be set up for Domini. And I do have a video coming talking about if Sabrina is going to wind up breaking up with rich and if it's going to be tied to dominate because we do have a photo from behind the scenes when they were actually filming this season and we get to see sabrina and dominate at the airport seemingly being confronted by tony so if you want to explore that particular conversation in that particular storyline and what could be potentially coming be sure to check that video out i will link every video that i mentioned in the description box down below but subscribe so that you don't miss when those things go live now, the very first sentence in this synopsis says that Danny and Tony lay their cards on the table. Um, and they do so in public. And I think they just have a blowout at the airport where they are seemingly having a bunch of other blowouts. I'm over um, Danny because while she's making valid arguments, she's making valid arguments for situations that she's not actually in. This man is not judging you. This man is showing up for you. This man is creating space for you. This man is trying to build safety for you. And you are kicking him every step of the way. You are spitting on all his efforts every step of the way. So for you to be pissed now, most recently, because he decided to put you up for a program that would better you in reference to your career and push you forward and give you something more to aspire to and even be motivated by, it's laughable. And it's one thing of like you not wanting it, but then you trying to villainize him for putting you in that position and, and utilizing whatever resources he has to give you that position. It's ridiculous. So we're just going to watch the continuation of that. And honestly, I hope that this episode is where the actual breakup happens, because at this point, Danny doesn't really appreciate the man that Tony is coming to the table as, but she also doesn't fully understand and appreciate all that she has for her. And she has settled a lot in her life into mediocrity or below mediocrity. And sometimes you got to leave the people to it until they're ready to pull themselves up out of it. You can't keep throwing resources at a person who wants to set fire to every single resource that you set at their door. Some other woman would absolutely love it and would love you in return the way that you deserve to be loved, Tony. So like, let's go ahead and move it along. Those are my thoughts. If you want to read the synopsis, again, it's on ericavane.com. You can go ahead and check it out. I do have a synopsis coming breakdown for episode seven as well. So be on the lookout for that. So subscribe if you haven't. It's your good sister. You love to talk to you with. And I appreciate you for listening. Drop a comment. Let me know what you think this all means in the comment section down below.